It's an absolute pleasure to welcome Steve Hackett uh, to the base sessions today. Thanks for taking time to talk to Steve. Thank you. And uh, of course, you came to musical prominence with Genesis, and I know for a lot of the fans out there, it's the classic lineup. You were there from '70 to '77. A lot of people think that that was a creative peak for the band. I mean, a lot of people sat in England by the pound, Foxtrot, and Am lies down on Broadway. I mean, how does this musical legacy sit with you these days? Well, it's funny because um, I still play um, quite a few of those numbers. Um, I revived them in order to bring them into the new century for a start. <laughs> and, and, um, but I kind of feel that um, because those things are classic, it's a bit like um, wearing a curator's hat in the, in the museum of your own making. Right. You can't really be a tribute to yourself, but at the same time, I still love that stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's always going to be a part of me. It's part of the Genesis legacy. And so you can't really separate the two. It's a thing that fired up a lot of musicians, a lot of fans. And um, um, I still think that that stuff is, is relevant. You know, Genesis told stories with their songs and um, I think that approach is, is still part of the way I, I view uh, romantic work. You can either have boy-girl romance or you can have you know, the wider yeah. aspect of that, I don't know, the widescreen the, treatment. The, 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 those songs, you were doing them as a medley at one point, weren't you? And you now kind of put them out as whole bodies, the whole songs. Yeah, it, it's funny that, you know, I, you, do, you do research and, and after a while, what you realize is that people don't want you to just do melodies and just a bit of this and a bit of that they want the whole thing yeah, yeah. and they want you know they want the piano introduction on the front of Firth of Fifth that they didn't get when the band did it yeah. even. so I try and reproduce that to some extent even more faithfully but then you did first time round with the well yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, actually that leads on to this kind of sense of perennial searching music I mean you've, you've played jazz you've played world music you've played blues you've done kind of dark experimental stuff mm -hmm. classic stuff I mean you work with the yeah. Royal Philharmonic it's, it's probably easier to say people you haven't worked with I mean is, is this what keeps you kind of musically inspired and motivated to keep moving forward with, with your music yeah I mean I, I don't know if it's so much um, reinventing yourself as the idea of fulfilling the earliest brief I thought to myself if I could sketch in a number of styles um, then I would be doing my job but mm -hmm. sometimes those sketches have turned into full bone portraits um, mm -hmm. so I, I came to a point where I, I on, a, on a, one of the acoustic albums I did I did six pieces of Bach and I thought well that's you know it's a bit like doing Shakespeare you, you don't do it <clears throat> in order to be top of the pops you do it because um, it's a great body of work yeah. and you just add your footnote to it I know yeah. I'm sounding modest there but um, there are so many styles of music that I'm drawn to and I have no prejudice anymore. I think it's great for you as well the fact that you can go out and do these things and the fans come with you. I mean some people are quite channeled aren't they with, with the music that they have to come play or feel they have to play. You've never kind of bracketed yourself in that way. No I haven't. I mean I, I came in with, with rock music but Genesis, um, there was so much acoustic guitar work with the original Genesis yeah. um, that um, uh, you couldn't really separate it. You couldn't say um, some of that was folk music and some of that was rock. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, they were as, just as interested in, in um, sounding like Joni Mitchell as they were um, taking on board Phil Collins' big band yeah, influences. Yeah. and Throw it um, all into the pot. Yeah, yeah. so there was a lot, of different, a lot of different styles. Even then it was a pan-genre approach and I like to think that I've I've kept that up and try and live dangerously. Yeah, yeah. Um, well it keeps you fresh for yourself doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Can I, can I bring it up to date? I mean, sure. you've got the, the Out of the Tunnels Mouth album came out in 2009. You've got yeah. Beyond the Shrouded Horizons came out late last year. Yep. I mean, both these albums have been really well received by the fans and also the critics. I mean, yeah. that's got to feel good at this point, hasn't it? Um, it, it has, yeah. And particularly because um, Tunnels Mouth was done during a difficult period when I was working at home. Uh, it was all done in the living room and, and yet it had great reviews. Um, and uh, I just found out today that Shrouded, although we haven't done as many gigs doing that because we did hundreds of gigs with, with, uh, with the other one, yeah. that's just outsold that. So um, uh, at this time when people are talking about the recession, so I've, <laughs> I've just said sod the recession, you know, I think it's just an excuse to, to pay people less and sack uh, people yeah. quicker. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll agree to agree on that one. I mean, look, and if we're looking forward now to the immediate future, uh, start of February right now, and uh, you've got the Breaking Waves UK tour starting yeah. on the 10th 
in Farnham, I think. That's right, yeah. Uh, you're yeah. in our neck of the woods, which is the Midlands on the, uh, I think it's the 25th. Bill Street yep. Robin. Um, yeah. Uh, that's a venue you've been at before, I believe. Yes, I, I, I've played there a couple of times. Um, I like playing there very much. Um, I, basically, I, I, I just love touring. And, I was going to ask you about this, I mean, because you've expressed a real love of playing live. I mean, <coughs> is it still as important to you now as, as it's always been? I think it's more important to me now right. than, than um, you know, some years ago. When I started out in the business, we were with Genesis, um, every club imaginable, and uh, that changed over time, of course. But, you know, for me now, it's, you know, you have the thought that um, uh, I shall be a certain age next birthday. <laughs> <laughs> getting coy about this thing. Never ask a lady his, a his age. And um, I just think, well, I'm still doing that. I mean, I, I love doing it. Yeah. Um, in the early days, I mean, people say to me, you know, oh, can you still do all that stuff that you could do then? And, um, you know, by the time you've jumped through all these hoops that I have, I figure, um, I wish when I was young I could have done or played in, in, in the way that I do now. I wish I had, right. I had the technique then. Youth that, is wasted on youth. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. So yeah, I can still nip around and do all that, but I it's, mean, it's about technique. the songs. You know, tapping, yeah. The tapping yeah. technique, I mean, I know everybody talks yeah. about it, but Eddie Van Halen is kind of credited with that. He, it was you. Well, you he's know. credited me with that. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, the sweeping pick in Mountstream, you know. That's it, yeah. Udia Menuhin, Abira, you know. That's it, yeah. Well, it's because um, I take from classical music, um, it was, uh, Bach, who was the inventor of tapping, as far as I'm concerned, right. I was trying to play something of, of his, and, it, and I, I figured out that you could only really do it. You could do it if you did it on one string. So that's where tapping came from, both hands on the, on the fretboard. And, and sweet picking is something that violinists do naturally, anyway. Uh -huh. So you've got the so. influence of keyboard. Violinists do it. You know, um, they rock the bones. I thought you could do it with a plectrum. That was in thoughts. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I was going to ask you about well, after the tour, what, what plans have you got? Anything immediately in the future? Um, well, there's there's a number of things that uh, we're, we're promoting um, beyond the Shrouded Horizon. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, um, I've been working with Chris Squire. We have an album coming out, Chris of, of Yes. Um, we have an album coming out, I think, in May. Right. Um, Possibly some shows with that. Talking to him about that, how, how, how best to do that, to fit that into his schedule and mine and whether we can combine the two. Yeah. Um, and, and beyond that, I've, I've started work on, a, on another Genesis Revisited album, so right. it's a re-revisited. Um, uh, so that would be a double album of stuff and uh, my life's a little bit like the recruiting officer these days. I'm <laughs> Yeah. Every time I meet, I, I meet an interesting singer, I say, yeah. "Would you like to sing on this?" You know, it's like so. <laughs> so and I, it's it's. Um, I'm shameless these days. I, I'll talk to anyone about doing anything. We've already got a fantastic number of, of, of guests for this um, reappraisal of that early Genesis right. period. Hopefully, with the show. I think uh, that's really interesting. Though. I mean, you know, yeah, as we yeah, said before, it keeps it, it keeps it fresh. You the yeah. interesting work with different people. Oh, it is. Bands around, and you know, yeah. it's a whole creative process working together. I find the most unlikely people listened to that early work, and you think, God, their, their stuff is so different. How come they listen to that? Or yeah. you never know what people do in in, in, the, in the privacy of their yeah. own. You kind of have preconceptions about what they listen to or what they like. And yeah, you know. yeah. You know, you think the heavy metal people—that's all they listen to. Yeah. And they, you yeah. know, some of them are. Um, um, talking about Prokofiev and Beethoven, and, um, <laughs> and uh, hang on a minute, no, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be doing something yeah, else. But something about Maiden or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. So, I mean, are there any messages for the fans? Please, uh, we'll wrap it up. Well, the message is uh, great to be out there doing it. Wonderful to be playing a location somewhere near you. Bilston, twenty fifth. Uh, um, that's it. Twenty fifth. Yeah, Bilston. Anyway, you can check on your website, can't you? Yeah, the exactly, the, the, the website, yeah, it's hackitsongs.com. Stephen, it's been a fantastic yeah. experience to talk to you, and thank you for taking the time to talk to him. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you Cheers. Very much. Okay, here we go, list of the gigs. List of the gigs, here we go, <laughs> All right. February 10, it's uh, Farnham at the Maltings, Sunday the 12th, Brighton the Comedia, Wednesday the 15th of Feb, Gateshead, The Sage. Uh, Thursday the 16th is 
Aberdeen, Lemon Tree, uh, Friday the 17th, Edinburgh, Queen's Hall, um, Homeforth on the 18th, the Picture Drone, uh, Buxton on the Sunday the 19th, the Opera House, New Brighton on the 20th, the Fall Pavilion, uh, Southampton the Brook, uh, 23rd is Bath at the Comedia, Leamington Spa Assembly on the 24th, 25th is Bilston, the Robin, uh, Wavenden or Wavenden, the Stables on Sunday the 26th, and Monday the 27th, Norwich at the University of East Anglia. Hey, thank you.